Okay, so it's even on my calendar on my phone. That July 7th, I was supposed to paint the deck back here. The, the deck was supposed to get a, uh, a coat of paint and for whatever reason on July 6th, I did something completely different. <laughs> so we live on a hill and my wife wanted a, for years, she wanted this hill to get dug into uh, and that maybe one day we would have a fire pit right here. So uh, on July 6th, I sunk a spade into the ground, not really thinking ahead of how big of a project this might be. <laughs> uh, oh. And I, uh, I started making what ended up being a stone fire pit amphitheater. And I did it over here. This was just dead grass. This became an area that we weren't using. Um, I'm going to walk you through and what I like about it is that it's all natural stone. Uh, there's no concrete uh, and, and it's bas just basically done with old-fashioned uh, retaining wall uh, practices. Basically the stone is, is tilted towards the ground. You're using gravity to your advantage and so I'm going to show you how we came up with this thing, making things up as we went uh, to come up with uh, what uh, right now is, is uh, very functional uh, and perfectly great for fires and big gatherings. How about a little bit of campfire music? Okay, so here's my backyard, and that's where I want the fire pit to go. I took tape measures and I made a square 14 feet by 14 feet because that's how much space I had when I did fires up by my house. I'm going to use this rope to make a curve because I don't want that fire pit to be square, so I'm basically eyeballing a curve and I'm laying it out on the ground with the rope. Then with the garden spade, I marked the grass where the rope line was. I don't need the rope or the tape measures anymore, so up they come. Then I started trenching around the perimeter. This was the first step in removing the sod. And then I was cutting sod. Oofta. Okay, I mentioned that I didn't use any power tools on this project, but cutting sod by hand is really a drag, and maybe it would have been nice to have a power sod cutter. Then after the sod was out, I noticed that the shape of the curve wasn't really what I wanted, so I laid the rope down and I made a new curve and I cut some more sod out just to make the shape of the curve better. So in this area, I was trying to level out a hill. So at the top, I had to dig down about three feet and I had to contend with a lot of roots. I wish I had footage of all of the roots that I dug out of this area, because there were a ton of them. And one person digging down three feet with a single spade will be at it for a while. One of the best reasons to make a fire pit is fire pits are hilarious. How about something bouncy?
One of the greatest things that we came across is once uh, we went to uh, order the, the boulders that we were going to get, uh, we found some great flagstone. And this is Smoky Mountain Stepper uh, flagstone. It's just, it's just a beautiful sedimentary rock from the Smoky Mountains. And uh, it is just uh, perfect for things like steps. Uh, and we liked these. So what happens is I bought three of these steps uh, these uh, flagstone steppers liked them so much that I went back and I bought uh, six more because we thought, well, what if we make benches? And this is where things start looking a little bit more amphitheatery. So just for reference, there really are two parts to this project. There is the upper part, which is really the seating area. And then there's the lower part, which supports the seating area and is basically a retaining wall leading up to it. So as I'm going on, I will refer to these two distinctly different parts of the project. So here I am in the upper part, and I'm starting to carve out stairs into the earth as sort of a main entrance into the area. I am going to use the flagstones as the treads for each step, but I do need to carve the steps out of the earth at a nine and a half inch rise. I feel like a nine and a half inch rise is a good step height for a landscaped project. Uh, but notice how I'm still contending with roots here, too. I have to uh, chop them out and I have to still sort of snip them uh, just to be able to level out each step. The steps will be supported by rocks in the front and then they will be resting on earth in the back. I love how these flagstones just sort of do their own thing. They really are going to dictate the shape of the steps and the seats that I will be putting into the seating area. So here you can see that I have rock supporting the front of each step and the back of each step is basically sitting on the earth. Notice how I'm putting rocks on top of each flagstone stepper as I work my way up. That's the weight that's going to secure them to make sure they never move. And again, I'm working in clay so when it rains, I get about an inch and a half taller. With the steps completed, I can now move out into the walls, but notice how I'm still trying to add rocks on top of those flagstones. That extra weight is just what I want to solidify those steps. My sweat has sweat. So one of the things they say about the creative process is start before you're ready, and I did. <laughs> I was not ready to do this. I wasn't even really planning to do this. I don't even know what compelled me to do this. Uh, I just put this shovel in the ground and then just kept digging. Uh, it's something that my wife wanted for a long time, uh, and uh, I just kept going until it was done. As a matter of fact, uh, I was so not ready, uh, I was totally anticipating not finishing this project this summer. Uh, I, I thought, you know what, I'll just start it and then later, you know, maybe next spring I can, I can finish the whole thing. Then my father-in-law reminded me that I've got a graduation next spring. One of my daughters, my last daughter, is graduating. We're going to have a graduation party in the spring. I can't have some half-baked fire pit here. i got to finish it now. So suddenly the pressure was on, uh, and uh, this kind of became the consumption of all my free time of the last three weeks. <laughs>
Okay, so I got a seven ton load of 12 inch and 18 inch rocks. 12 inch rocks I can pick up and move by hand. 18 inch rocks I need to use the hand truck. There's just no way you can lift them. Uh, and so I'm getting really good at this point at uh, picking up the 12 inches and then basically rolling the 18 inches because they're huge. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, why don't you like it and subscribe to the channel? So I bought a six pack of t-shirts and basically destroyed all of them on this project. I went through a lot of socks too. I was working through a heat wave too, so that nice new t-shirt that I'm wearing there will probably be toast by the end of the day. This is what it's like trying to tangle with one of those 18 inch rocks. About all you can do is roll them, but they're perfect for making the base of the walls. You want the big rocks obviously on the bottom uh, and the smaller rocks up on top, uh, but the big rocks are great for being foundations for things like the seats. For the foundation of the seat, I would basically just roll 18 inch rocks into place uh, and then start building clay all the way around them. And I would mash it into the cracks with water, basically make a big paste out of it. Uh, and I wanted to find rocks that sort of had a flat top. And then I would add rocks behind them uh, so that I would have some sort of level surface in order to keep those flagstones uh, sitting on there pretty. So basically when you're doing a natural stone wall like this, you want to stack the rocks in such a way that they are resting on rock on one side and then leaning against the earth on the other side. And so you want the pitch of your earth wall to be at like a 45 degree angle. Uh, it can be a little bit steeper than that, but 45 is pretty good. Because you still want the weight of the rock to be resting on the rock that sits below it. This really locks the rocks in nicely. After a while, you start getting a knack for fitting rocks together, and they can actually be made to be pretty comfortable for things like backrests and seats. Here you see me trying to puzzle piece some rocks together in order to make a backrest. It really is all about trial and error. You're flipping rocks over, you're turning them around until you get what seems to work for you. E, which I didn't write. I think Stevie Ray Bone wrote that key. Or Elvis, maybe. Probably, probably Elvis. Again, puzzle piecing rocks together is really sort of the name of the game. Just lots of trial and error. I like to keep trying rocks in different nooks and crannies until I feel like they are stable and that they don't really want to move very much. With some of these bigger rocks that are going to be on the bottom, I like to do something called earth nesting, where you're basically digging a hole uh, big enough to just sort of nest it into the ground. I know that it's called earth nesting because I just made that up. And then you fill the cracks with dirt and gravel and water it to set it. Each of these two 18 inch boulders have a flat side, so I'm trying to put the flat side toward the top because I want to be able to seat a flagstone on the top of there. But as you can see, it takes a lot of jockeying around to get them level and also to get them so that they actually seat the flagstone nicely. Again, lots of trial and error. Then once I'm happy with the boulders, I start packing the back with six inch rocks, more clay, uh, until the seat sits on there just the way I want it. I gotta do a lot of tamping down. I, uh, a lot, there's a lot of clay in there and so I wanna water it and I wanna, I basically I'm, I'm tamping it down with a stick so that that stuff isn't gonna go anywhere when it dries. 
If the flagstone is level and if it passes the jump test, then I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. Again, I'm building the backrests for comfort, but I'm also overlapping them on top of the flagstone so that it gets weighted down. I do a lot of watering of the rocks so that the packing behind the rocks gets even more firm. This is river rock and it's great to mix in with clay to pack behind the rocks. It really does make a super firm foundation. So after getting a good start on the upper part, it's time for me to start working on the lower part now. Gabe nested these 18 inchers about midway up the lower hill, so I'm going to start building a retaining wall right off of the top of those. Again, I want them to be half on the rocks below them and half into the earth. Uh, this is what's going to make for a very stable retaining wall on the lower part. Right where my feet are here, I'm going to put a flower bed and I'll plant some forester grass in there. And then below that, I'll have another retaining wall too. Um, so this will be a real pretty way to terrace these, uh, the, the lower part of the retainer. And of course, whenever you add new earth, you have to tamp it hard. What I'm making here is the line of rocks that's going to hold the gravel into the seating area. So I want to make sure that these are nested really well. And then these are the two steps in the lower part. And then into the cracks goes more river rock and clay. Now it's time to make the lowest retaining wall leading up to the flower bed on the lower part. Another thing that's really going to make these rock walls come alive over time is plants. Pun intended. And it helps to lock in the rocks too. Anytime you got roots kind of flying through the bottoms of these rocks, it's going to help them be stable. This is stone crop sedum and it grows just about anywhere you put it. And so it's really easy to just sort of stuff it into the cracks of these rocks, water it, uh, and over time it will grow. Stone crop grows about three inches tall, but there are some places where I would like to have some plants that just sort of drape a little bit closer to the rocks, and that's where I'm going to use money wart. Money wart is also very easy to plant, and I like it to maybe drape around the steps a little bit more. Money wart is nearly as hardy as stone crop, and you can just sort of push it into the crevices uh, and give it a good water, and it will grow. I've got this old forester grass plant that I can split up and put right here into the new flower bed. Those are the plants I'll put in this summer, and then next summer I'll put in some flowers right next to the grasses, right here. So this gravel is, is called gray trap. It's such a perfect size for actually locking in the rocks. Uh, so I would take some time to put clay and this gravel in and I would mash it between, between the rocks. So once I had the rocks in place, I would just pack in clay and these, these, this gravel stuff. Sometimes I would use river rock too. Uh, smaller rocks really do help lock in. Uh, bigger boulders and this gray trap also has a benefit is it's going to get a very pleasing dark color 
Um, so what looks nice and light gray right now is going to get, it's, it, it basically mellows with age and gets darker and cooler. It's really neat looking. This is all really solid stuff. I can walk all over this and none of these are going anywhere. They're stuck together with clay uh, and so this stuff doesn't move. Uh, like I said, I've got some raised beds back here that I've had for uh, 10 years uh, and and these just they don't move. They are they are locked together. I want my fire pit hole to be a basin. That means that the walls are going to be slanted at a 45 so I can again build my rocks on top of one another. I'm putting in my, my first row of rocks slanting into the, uh, into the uh, wall uh, and then I will be using clay to solidify those. But then on top of those, I want my next row of rocks to be half on the rocks that I just put in and then also half on the earth just like I did the walls. That makes them really stable. Uh, and in the middle there, I'm adding gravel and I'm adding clay. Uh, and this fire pit, just like the walls, is going to be very stable. We wanted a natural stone look. Uh, we were looking at uh, commercial fire pits. We were looking at fire rings. But with the natural stone aesthetic that we've got going with the walls, we thought that a natural fire pit would look much better. up some of these cool backyard string lights too. So it really does kind of add a really neat sort of, I don't know, welcoming ambiance to the yard, stuff that we never had before. And uh, it, uh, it really does uh, make it much more homey, more inviting. We really enjoy it. My daughter's got friends coming over tonight and they're gonna have a fire. Uh, so it's really great to have a part of our backyard that we just weren't using because it was on a hill and the grass was dying. Uh, it's great to have a part of our yard that we can actually use now. Uh, hey, you guys, if you liked this video, uh, why don't you give it a like and please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, got a lot more creative stuff coming down the pike. Uh, until next time, my name's Pete. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.